Hi, welcome to Ms. Cooper's art class. Today I'm going to show you how to draw the entire alphabet using isometric drawing. But let's go over some quick basics first. If you have isometric paper, you'll notice the lines only go vertically and in two diagonal directions. These are the lines you're going to need to make things three-dimensional. So, for example, if you were to try to draw a cube using an isometric grid, you wouldn't draw any horizontal lines, you would just follow the lines that exist to make a cube. Basically every square um, would turn into a rhombus and you will use all three directions of the paper to make something 3D. So if you only use two of the directions, you haven't quite made it look three-dimensional yet. I have some other basics videos to prep you for the alphabet. Um, this one goes through it pretty quickly. So let's go over the letter A and I'll go over this one in a little bit more depth. So you'll notice I have some grid paper with a square grid off to the side here to figure out how the letters look first. All of mine are going to be five blocks tall by three blocks wide, um, but you don't have to draw the letters the same way I do. This just gives you a basis for an alphabet that looks kind of similar. So I would make mine, you know, five blocks tall, three blocks wide, and have a gap in the middle. If I were to outline it, that would make my edges just a little bit clearer. So here's something to think about when you are converting this onto isometric grid paper. Every square that you see with the 90 degree corners on the square grid paper, when you convert it to the triangle grid, has to follow the lines that are already there. So what you would do is you would draw it using the vertical lines as vertical, but any horizontal lines would actually become a diagonal line. So the idea here with our letter A is that you know we will kind of put each block on there and it will look slanted. So each block is a little rhombus shape. So if I were to, you know, go three blocks wide and five blocks tall with the letter A, it would look something like this and it would look slanted when I outlined that letter A. So I'm going to add a quick outline to it to make it just a little bit easier to see here. So then our next step is to send it backwards into space. So if you look at every corner, you have to use the diagonal line that you have not already used. So I already went up and to the right. Now I'll go up and to the left from each corner that I can possibly use. So that includes the bottom corner of one of the legs of the A as well. If you're having trouble figuring out which parts you should outline, you could use a highlighter and kind of draw a 3D shadow coming off of it. This might help you separate um, the walls and the floor, kind of so to speak, in the middle of the letter A, in that hole that's in the middle, to make it look like there actually is a hole in the middle of that letter. So sometimes using a highlighter or a marker or somehow shading your letter is usually pretty helpful. So I've taken the left side and also shaded that so we can see how the letter A looks three-dimensional. If you take all of that out, it looks pretty good. So now let's see what happens if we draw the letter A, but instead of not quite rounded off corners, we still have corners that have a bit of an edge or a little bit of a diagonal. Let's see how that goes. So if I were to kind of cut the boxes in half diagonally at the top to get these kind of diagonal kind of angled off corners to the letter A, we can see how that would look on the grid paper. Remember, every square on the grid becomes a rhombus on our grid paper, and so we are cutting those in half diagonally. That is okay, that still does follow the rules of, the, of isometric drawing, it just doesn't follow the grid paper, and that is okay. So you can see what that would look like with those diagonals in there. Um, so what you'll notice is the diagonals look a little bit different, that is okay, they're different parts of the rhombus that is correct, it just looks a little odd when we've drawn that slanted letter A on the page but we can close it off and send it into space like normal. You'll note that when you put the slanted side on the letter A, that you have to have that diagonal that goes off the grid match the other diagonal that goes off the grid and they will be parallel. If you want more information about letters with diagonals, I do have videos about that that go through that a little bit more in depth and a little bit slower. So now let's check out the letter B. So I'm going to use those kind of angled off corners again for this letter. Um, so I'm glad you got to see that for the letter A. So when I outline it, you have some that are cut neatly in half and then in the middle of the B, there's a, a square on the grid that kind of just has a, a triangular cutout in it. Um, so that's one of the things that we are going to use here. So let's look at it on the 
isometric grid paper. So it is five blocks tall and it is two line segments wide. And now we are going to cut across the next rhombus that would represent that square on the grid. We'll go up one to space and remember that triangle cutout. It goes about a half a block up in space. So we want to consider that while we are drawing it before we close off the letter B. And then we want to make sure that we're getting those holes in the correct spot. So each one is you know, either the second block up or the fourth block up, depending which one you're looking at. Do remember to separate the walls from the floor when you are closing off the middle holes of that B to make sure it looks like it actually is three-dimensional. And then we can neatly close off the sides. Um, and then we don't have to close anything else up, up at the top, and then we just have to close off that divider as well and send that off into space. And then we have all of our three-dimensional parts of our B ready to go. But let's move on to the letter C, and this one is pretty easy if you do a blocky version. Five blocks tall, three blocks wide, it basically draws itself. So what we need to do is just get that kind of side post in there, five segments tall, let's draw that in there, and then it's three segments wide, and then we can continue closing it off. One block up, two blocks over, another three blocks up, and so on, until we have this letter C and it's on kind of a slant. Um, now what you'll notice is my app kind of is, is snapping the line to a weird spot and I couldn't quite get it after a couple tries, so I just kind of left it because I think you do get the idea here. And I'm going to show you a second way to draw this letter. So now I'm going to send it into space, making sure that I'm using all three types of lines that exist on my symmetric grid. So ones that go up into space, ones that go up into the right, and ones that go up into the left. Remember, the bottom of that C also goes off into space, so do remember to um, close that one off and send it off into space using those lines that go diagonally and to the left. And again, my app was kind of snapping to some weird spots, but you get the idea on that one. So now let's look at the letter C if we were to curve it just a little bit. Um, and I do have a video that goes over curved objects in greater depth if you would like a bit of a longer and more thorough explanation. So let's think about where the letter C kind of meets the boundaries of this rectangle. Again, I'm making all of my letters um, five blocks tall and three blocks wide. So what I'm going to do is include some curves in there, but fill in as many blocks completely as I can. So the kind of post on the left of the letter is going to be three complete blocks, and then same with where it curls around and where it touches the bottom. It's really just the, uh, the kind of corners of the letter, so to speak, that have the um, rounded parts. So if we were to look at this block by block, we would see that each square in the corners kind of have this has this curve going through it, which we would put on the isometric grid. This would curve, so remember anything that's kind of circular on the square grid is going to be more of an oval or an ellipse when we put it on the isometric paper. So we will kind of look at this block by block on the isometric paper. And it is a little bit easier if you do add an outline first to your letter. So I'm going to outline mine to make it just a little bit easier to see when we move to that isometric paper. And I can mess with the curves a little bit later if I needed to. So let's check out the letter on this isometric paper. So it has you know, three very straight line segments, one curve in the corner. So I'm trying to make this as uncomplicated as possible one flat part at the bottom and then remember it curves around and these two curves look very different they're kind of parts of you know an ellipse so our you know sides kind of you know the top left and bottom right of it would be you know a little more elongated and the other parts would be a little tighter kind of like the middles of that C so we would go ahead and add all of these curves to the corners and so this is a a rough drawing of a letter C on the isometric grid. And I'll, I'll emphasize the, the rough there. This is something I would kind of go back and change just a little bit if I was um, doing this for an art project. And then to send it back in space, I would go one block into space and then just make sure that curve that you do at the top um, matches the letter C. At the bottom, you would still kind of close off that little part where it hooks around, um, kind of like you normally would anyway. 
on any other letter. It's just the curved parts that are, you know, something to pay attention to. So if I were to shade it, I would shade the tops kind of a dark blue, and then I would shade that left side a little bit purple so you can kind of see how that curves around. So again, this is a rough version of letter C, but that is how you do the letter C on the isometric grid. So now let's talk about the letter D. So like most letters, it's going to be five blocks tall for that post on the left and three blocks wide. So I'm going to complete the squares in the middle and then kind of cut diagonally across the corners. And that basically forms the letter D. The hole in the middle just kind of forms itself as long as you've been coloring in all of the boxes. So I'm going to outline that just a little bit darker to make it easier to see to transfer that to the isometric grid paper. So following the lines that I've drawn on here, I'm going to add that vertical line that is five blocks tall as well as I can. Um, and then remember every horizontal line is going to go off on a diagonal. So I'm going to go up and to the right. I'm going to cut off that corner and you'll notice those diagonals where I cut them off are slightly different. That is okay because remember every square on this grid turns into a rhombus. So everything is shifted just slightly. So if we envision those squares, we are cutting them in half or cutting the rhombus in half in the same way. Remember to use all of your lines available to you on the grid paper to send it back into space. We've already covered vertical and up to the right. So now we need up to the left to complete this. Do remember to separate the walls from the floor in the middle of your letter to make it very clear that there is a hole in the middle and that it goes back into space. Sometimes using a highlighter or coloring in your letter makes it just a little bit easier to tell the difference, but that is the letter D. Now let's examine the letter E. So this letter is going to be five blocks tall and three blocks wide like the other letters, so it's kind of easy to start with that post on the left and then cover the top and the bottom to get that width in there. So then really all that's left is to do that kind of middle post that sticks out, and then we have a basic letter E shape. So let's convert this to the isometric grid, remembering that each square is going to turn into a rhombus off to the side here. So let's start by covering that vertical line, making sure it is five line segments tall, like the one that we have on the left here, and then that it goes three line segments up and to the right. We kind of go up one, over two, up one, over two, and follow that pattern along the side. And I do have a video that goes very in depth with the letter E, for beginners, so if you'd like a you know super duper beginner video, I do have one that covers that in case that's something that you're looking for. So we are going to end up with what looks like a kind of slanted letter E because we're using the vertical lines and the ones that go up and to the right. That leaves one type of line left, the ones that go up and to the left. So we will use those to complete our letter E from every corner that we can possibly send back into space. And I'll just take it back one. Remember to make sure that you are sending those posts of the letter E or those little kind of teeth of it backwards into space to make sure that your letter E looks three dimensional. And that is the letter E. Now let's take a look at the letter F. It's going to be five blocks tall and three blocks wide. So it pretty much draws itself, but I'm going to make the middle post um, just a little bit shorter and I'll have it only go one extra block backwards into space. So if I were to outline it, it would look like this. These boundaries often help when we're transferring it to the isometric grid paper. So now let's start drawing that post. It's going to be five blocks tall, and then it's going to go up and to the right by one block, and we will continue looking at each block and making it kind of a slanted version of itself, paying attention to each individual rhombus that it can make up on the right, on the grid paper. So it does look a little bit extra slanted because I made the one post in the middle shorter. So if that is something that bothers you a little bit, you could always make the one post just a little bit longer. So once we've used all of our lines that go vertically and that go up into the right, we are going to use lines that go up into the left to complete it, remembering to make that post that sticks out 3D as well and sending that backwards into space. Um, now, if you are not so sure about the letter F having that shorter post, you could always make it just a little bit longer by one block. So you could go out two places instead and complete it like this if that looks a little bit neater to you, but that is absolutely up to you. So now let's examine the letter G. So for the letter G, um, I start with kind of the way I would do a letter C and I start curling it up into space, but then I fill up half of a block. 
and I go from there when I outline. So you can see I fill up just half of a block. There's a tiny space in the middle. And so now let's see what that looks like on the grid paper. So I'm going to pay attention to each rhombus. I'm going to try to visualize that on the paper. I've gone up three and I'm going to go over one and a half. I go over one and a half blocks on the square grid paper. So I will do the same on the isometric paper and close that off. So it's slanted, but I will send every part back into space that I can. So I'll draw those lines that go up and to the left. So this includes where it curls around. So do make sure to look at every part. And if you need to pause the video to see that or take a screenshot, I would encourage it. And you can also use highlighter to shade it to help you visualize where the shadows would fall and where you would close off each side. So I'll do the tops in this kind of purple indigo kind of color and I'll use a brighter more intense purple for everything on the left side. So you'll notice where it curves around you have two things that are shaded purple right on top of each other. They are outlined so you can tell the difference. And I would encourage you to screenshot if you need to for that one. So let's check out the letter H because it's five blocks tall and three blocks wide. It practically draws itself here. Two tall posts with one little connecting box in the middle. So let's convert that to isometric paper. We're going to outline those posts first of all, remembering that we do not use horizontal lines. Anything that's horizontal will become a diagonal instead. And all those diagonals will go up and to the right. And then we'll draw lines that go up and to the left to complete the three-dimensional look, remembering to get the bottom of that post on the inside um, and separating the walls from the floor, which I didn't quite do there. All right, so now let's look at the letter I. I'll make it three blocks tall and it's going, or three blocks wide, sorry, and five blocks tall. So it pretty much draws itself here. I'm going to make sure I'm copying all of the horizontal lines to be diagonally up and to the right and all of the vertical lines to just be vertical and then I'll close off every side. Something to pay attention to is kind of separating the, the sides from the tops and remembering that back corner right there is important to actually making it look 3D. You'll also notice that those two sides are actually the same side so if you were shading it it would have similar shading so you didn't do anything wrong there it just kind of looks like that. And so that is the letter I, and I'm, I don't think I need to go as in depth with that one. Um, but now let's look at a kind of similarly shaped letter, which is the letter J. Um, and this is sometimes a little bit confusing. So I'm going to do mine two blocks tall. You could do this differently if you want. I'll go down another three blocks and I'll cut off a corner on a diagonal here and then kind of fill in the bottom, cut off another corner and then have it hook up to make that letter J. So this is just how I do mine. And if you've been watching a lot of these other letters so far, you kind of know how those cut off corners look when we transfer it to the isometric grid. But I'm going to make an outline on here a little bit neater just to make it a little bit easier to see what I'm going to do when I convert it to that isometric grid. So if you think of every you know, square on the grid, like a rhombus on here, then you can follow those diagonals go up and to the right and use vertical lines. So no horizontal lines here. I'm going to draw this you know, as, as neatly as I can um, in this app. And then when I get to those corners, envision that whole rhombus being cut diagonally in half and that will help you to draw your diagonals. So it's okay that the one I just drew just now doesn't quite follow the grid. That's fine because it still does follow the rules of isometric drawing. And so then when I'm making my letter J and I'm closing it off, now I can add those lines that go up and to the left so I can close off the top of my letter and make it go backwards into space. Remember to separate the wall and the floor in the middle of that J to show that it really does hook around. And it kind of feels like you might need to put more of a shadow under there, but you really don't. Um, that diagonal line, if you were drawing perfectly straight lines, would actually just be one continuous line. And that would work just fine. And if shading helps, I'll add some shading here. So I'll do the front light blue here. Um, and then I'll do the tops kind of a, more of an indigo kind of color. It's a little bit dull. And then I'll go in with kind of a dark gray. And so you'll see that there are two sides that are very similar on here. Um, and that is correct when you see that. So hopefully that is helpful with the letter J. So next up is the letter K, and this is going to use some diagonals. So I'll remind you that if you need to go more in depth with that, I do have a video for letters with diagonals. So I'm going to make that left post five boxes tall. 
And then I'm going to draw a middle area in here. So I will shade that box completely just to make my life easier here. And then I'm going to figure out where the diagonal legs of my K touch the bottom and the top of these boundaries I've set for myself. And then shade those in and draw those diagonals. So this is how I would do it if I was gridding it out. But I'm going to add an outline just to make it a little bit easier to picture those diagonals and how they cut across. So you'll notice these diagonals cut across um, kind of a, a space that is one block wide and then two blocks tall. Um, so this is something we are going to remember because remember every square on this grid is going to be kind of a rhombus shape on the isometric grid. So every once in a while we will go outside the lines, but we'll mostly focus on the lines that are vertical and the ones that go up and to the right. Everything should pretty much be going that direction. And I'm going to get rid of the highlighter because I think that will make this outline a little bit easier to see, just in case you are looking to screenshot this. So remember this um, diagonal will cut off a space that looks more or less like this. So we want to visualize that in the isometric grid. So let's start with that post that is five blocks tall, a nice straight vertical line. It's one block across when we hit the bottom here and I'm trying to go for precision. Um, this app kind of wants to snap to weird spots sometimes. So we will go one block wide, two blocks up. And remember we have that diagonal, it's going to cut across that space. So that is correct to do that. Then we are going to add our next diagonal and that's going to look more or less parallel to it. Add our little vertical line there and do our next diagonal, which might look awkward, but it looks a little less awkward when the letter is completed. We'll add our parallel diagonal line, our next vertical, and then we will close it off. And if I was doing this for you know an art project, I would take a little bit more time. So it's easiest, I think, to close off the very tip tops of the letter first, and then the side, and then the bottom, because those are kind of the easiest ones to picture. So the last part we need to close off is that diagonal, and we will simply draw a parallel diagonal line to close off that letter K to make it make sense in that space. And that is the letter K. So now let's take a look at the letter L, and I'm sorry about my laptop fan whirring in the background here. All right, so our letter L is five blocks tall, three blocks wide, and look at that, we've already drawn it. <laughs> it's that easy. Um, the letter L is a simple one. So now we are going to draw a vertical line that is five blocks tall, and a diagonal line that is three blocks wide, because remember, we don't use horizontals, we use diagonals here. So we are going to end up with a slanted letter L where we visualize each block as kind of a rhombus. So it will take up this kind of space. We'll send it back using the lines we haven't used yet, which go up and to the left. And remember to you know, send that leg of the letter off into space as well. And that is the letter L. Okay, so let's take a look at the letter M. And before I get too into this, Remember, I have a video that goes more in depth about diagonals and how those function on the isometric grid. So let's establish the two sides of my M. I do have a rather thin alphabet here. Um, if I wanted to be a little more comfortable drawing this, I would make it wider. So I will add um, that little V shape in the middle. So I'm going to find some exact lines on the uh, square grid to do this. And I'm going to make mine kind of thin. Um, however, you could move that line down in space just a little bit and have that bar in the middle of your letter M um, a little bit thicker, although I find it looks a, a little bit awkward when I convert it to the isometric paper. So I'm going to move that V back up into space. But what you want to remember is how every square on these square grids will become a rhombus on the isometric grid. And remember that for any line that does line up perfectly with the squares in the square grid, it's going to be either vertical or it's going to go up into the right. That diagonal will simply cut across those square spaces the same way it does here. It's just kind of on a slant. So now I'm going to take this line here vertical. Um, it's going to be four blocks tall. We're going to look very carefully here. We're going to draw a V that goes halfway through the next block. So it goes half a block across times one block tall for drawing that V. So you'll notice the two sides of that V do not look the same. It looks like there's a little more space on one side than the other, and that is okay. That is fine, that is how it is supposed to look. So just draw your lines as accurately as possible, and if I was doing this for an art project, I would use a little bit more accuracy. 
And now we can do those lines that go up and to the left. We can add those on. I find it easiest to do the top first and then to kind of figure out those left sides. So remember, there is space at the bottom of that leg. There's a little bit under the V. And then we want to draw a parallel diagonal to close off that letter M. And I would recommend taking a screenshot of this too if you need to. But that is the letter N. Let's take a look at the letter N. So my alphabet that I've been drawing here is five blocks tall and three blocks wide. So I think I'll start by making those two side posts. And then we have a diagonal that cuts across the middle. So I'm going to make my highlighter a little bit thinner while I'm demonstrating this part. So what I'm going to do is draw a diagonal line that um, kind of goes two blocks in and then goes to the end of the other side. So if you look carefully at where this is on the square grid, you can see how that could transfer over to the isometric grid paper. If we look at these diagonals, they cut across one square and you know up or down two squares. And remember, every square on here is going to be a rhombus on the grid paper. I know I've said that a lot of times, but I'm, I know people might be specifically looking at some letters and not others here. So let's get that vertical line at the post of the end, and then remember that we are going to use the isometric grid, no horizontals. Everything that's horizontal will go on a diagonal line instead. Now we're going to go two blocks up in space following that letter N, but now we can draw one of those diagonals that goes outside of the normal rules of isometric drawing, because it actually does line up. It's, it's going across the spaces we need it to go across. We'll do a vertical line. We'll cap it off with one line segment, and now we are going to go down in space by two line segments, and then we can add that diagonal in the middle. And so the middle of our letter N looks a little bit thicker here, and that is okay. Um, I'd say it's a little bit wider than one box wide. Um, then we can continue to send it off into space using our lines that go diagonally and off to the left, and using our other diagonals to kind of close it off. Remember to do that bottom of the letter N as well. Do not forget that part. Now let's try the letter O. So it is going to be five blocks tall and three blocks wide. It basically draws itself. We just don't have to color in the middle here so it has that hole in the middle. We're going to draw a line five line segments tall and then go over three blocks wide. Remember all of our horizontals will become diagonals when we convert it to the grid paper. And then we can send it back off into space using diagonals that go up and to the left to use all three types of lines on our grid paper. Do remember to separate the walls from the floor in the middle to make sure your letter O actually does look three-dimensional. Um, and if you need some shading to help you kind of visualize that a little bit better, um, I'll add some shading and I would recommend that you do too if you need to. This is pretty helpful for me. I do go a little more in depth with this too in my um, complex shapes and holes isometric drawing video, um, so I won't go super in depth here. But now let's look at the letter P. It's going to be five blocks tall and three blocks wide. And basically by drawing it, it's pretty easy to close it off. So I'm going to do kind of a, a blocky letter P. So it's going to be five blocks tall. I'll go up two into space and look very carefully at those line segments I use on the square grid. And again, I would recommend taking screenshots if you need to. I'll separate the walls from the floor in the middle and I'll use my lines going up and to the left diagonally to complete sending it off into space and then use verticals or diagonals to close it off, whichever type of line is appropriate. And that is the letter P. All right, so let's check out the letter Q. So the letter Q is going to be drawn kind of a lot like an O. I'll do five blocks tall and you know three blocks wide but I'm actually going to leave out the bottom right corner I'm not going to draw anything there yet what I am going to draw is just kind of a little bit that sticks out for the letter Q it's a little awkward to do in this kind of space that I've made for myself um, so you could always do yours differently but what I would do is go um, just over halfway up um, kind of halfway over on some of these lines maybe about halfway over to make just a little tail for the Q that is kind of built in and doesn't stick out past the parameters I made for myself so the letters look kind of similar but if you have a different way of doing it definitely go for that. So now off to the right it will be five blocks tall. I'll go over two blocks up a little bit 
kind of down and over on a diagonal a little bit. If we visualize that square as kind of a, a rhombus shape and filling that space, we want to do that carefully. And my app was having trouble with the corners, so I approximated it as closely as I could when I was making the the little tail for my letter Q. Um, it didn't it didn't quite get there, but it was close enough <laughs> that I moved on after a little bit. Um, we'll go up another four blocks and then we will close it off. And then that middle hole is um, one block wide and three blocks tall. So remember anything that would normally be horizontal is on a diagonal here. And then we can close it off and make it 3D. So make sure every corner kind of uses all of the lines available to you on the isometric grid. And then the tail won't need anything 3D. Let's look at the letter R. Um, this is a very popularly requested letter. Basically draw a letter P. Five blocks tall, three blocks wide, close it off, and then let's consider that diagonal. It would go to the, you know, very lower right corner, and I would draw the stem from the middle. But there are a lot of ways to draw the letter R, so you choose what works for you. Just note the diagonal and how that fits into the square grid, because um, it's going to not quite follow the lines of the isometric grid when we convert it over there. All right, so every vertical line in here is going to be vertical, but every line that's horizontal in the square grid is actually going to be diagonal and to the right on this isometric grid paper. Now we're going to go two blocks up to follow what it looks like on the square grid, and then we're going to draw a diagonal that doesn't match all the lines, but that's okay because it connects back to the correct points. So as long as that diagonal connects back to the correct points, then this is an accurately drawn letter R. And then we'll add that hole in the middle. So it's a great example of how anything square with 90 degree corners turns into a rhombus on the isometric grid. And then we can close it off. I like to send lines going out diagonally and to the left to make sure I've used all of my types of lines. Remember to separate that hole in the middle and remember to you know, put a 3D part on that lower leg of the letter R. All right, so now let's try the letter S. Um, this one's going to be five blocks tall, three blocks wide, like every other letter here. And this is such a popular letter that I do have a video where I go into it in, uh, in greater depth. So you can definitely check that out. I'll link it um, in this video for sure. So remember every vertical line um, stays vertical and every horizontal line actually goes up and to the right diagonally on here. So it's going to follow those diagonals. So it's going to look a little bit slanted when we convert it to the grid paper, but having it on the um, square grid paper helps us to visualize how many boxes it takes up and how long to draw our line segments. So then we send it back into space by going up, you know, diagonally into the left. And this is a letter that I go through quickly because I have a longer video about it, but please feel free to take a screenshot of this. One way to check if you've done the letter S correctly, because it has all those curves, is to go in and add some shading or some highlighting to it. So I'm going to use some dark blue for the tops of each part of the letter. And what you'll notice down here is, you know, I, I shaded in for the top, but if I notice that something was incorrect, it probably means that I didn't do the left side, which I'm going to shade in purple here in the middle. So don't forget that little part in the middle. That's part of what makes the S curved, and don't forget that little curved part up at the top as well, or what would normally be curved on the letter S. But again, take a screenshot, and you know, I have another video that goes in greater depth on this one. So now let's examine the letter T. This one is pretty quick and simple. It's going to be three boxes tall, or wide, and then five boxes tall. Um, so now look at each line segment, and you'll copy those onto the isometric grid paper. So anything that is one line segment tall is also going to be one line segment tall on the grid paper. So I'm going to go through this one quickly, but take a screenshot if this is going a little too fast. And then you can kind of copy that down um, or comment a question, and I'll go in in just greater depth here. You'll note that two of the sides are the same color, and they're very close to each other, and that is okay. That is still correct, so I'll add some shading so you can see the letter T. So now let's talk about the letter U, and I'm going to make mine kind of blocky. So it's going to be five blocks tall and then three blocks wide, so then I just kind of have to draw the other side upwards into space. So this gives me some lines to work with on the isometric grid. So now I know my line segment on the left is five blocks tall. I know that that horizontal becomes a diagonal, that's three blocks across another five blocks up, one over, 
and then go down to form the middle of that U, just sticking two lines on the isometric grid paper. So now we can add those lines that go up into the left to close it off. And remember to separate the wall from the floor, kind of in that, that dip in the middle of the letter U. And then we have an isometric letter U. So now let's talk about the letter V. It's a similar shape, but I'm going to do diagonals. And I have a video that goes more in depth about diagonals. So I find it easier to um, kind of connect the dots, or in this case, the line segments, to know where my diagonals are going for the letter V. So you'll notice I outline the middles and the um, kind of top areas here. That helps me know where my diagonals are going to go. Um, so then I'm going to kind of color this in to help me find the other diagonals and make sure that my lines are um, running more or less parallel to each other. So I'm going to outline this just to make it a little bit easier to see where everything goes and how those diagonals work in space because um, you'll notice the middle of that V is kind of two blocks up from the bottom and it goes halfway through that line segment. So let's outline those, those line segments that form the top and the bottom here and you can see where I uh, counted how many blocks down it should go in space. And now we can connect these with diagonals. And the diagonals will not look the same on each side. They're going to have kind of a, a different angle, and that is okay. That is still correct for isometric drawing. I'm going to count up two blocks, go halfway through that line segment, and connect those back. And now I can close off the tops and the side of my letter. You'll notice I make a parallel line for the diagonal of that letter V. You don't have to make it straight or anything. Just make it follow the other diagonal line and just make sure that they are parallel so you can see what that looks like on the isometric paper. Next, we'll look at the letter W, which is very similar to the M and it's very stylized for me, so you can absolutely do yours differently if you'd like to. But it's going to be five blocks tall on each side and it's going to be three blocks wide. So I'm going to draw the, um, a chevron shape, I guess, an upside down V in the middle, and then I can outline it to see how it connects back into space for when I convert it to my isometric paper. Um, if you are looking for something a little more in depth or a little bit easier, you can check out my um, video for letters with diagonals, um, which goes a little bit more in depth, or if you want to make this easier on yourself, you can spread out your letter W and make it just a little bit wider. But I'm going to add an outline to um, make it a little easier to see how this fits in space. So now keeping in mind each um, square will kind of be a rhombus off to the side, let's draw this out. So I'll pay attention to where my line segments go and you'll notice that bottom V kind of goes up one line segment and over half of one. And that's where that connection point is. So the two sides of the, the slant are going to be a little different. So again, it's, it's one tall and about half of a line segment wide and I did not do the best job with these diagonals. The, lot, the uh, app really wanted to snap to some certain points, so I'm sure you will do better. Um, if I was turning this in for a project, I would have um, maybe used a different app. But we can add our vertical lines and close it off. So we have a bit of a stylized W here, but again, you can make yours a little differently than I made mine here. And I can close off the top and the sides. And remember the bottom and that little V in the middle do need to be sent backwards into space using one of those lines that goes kind of diagonally and to the left. So that is the letter W. Um, now let's examine the letter X here. So I find it easier to mark off the points where the tops and the bottoms are since it splits off. And I'm going to shade in that middle square just to make sure that it is actually kind of thick enough in the middle. So I'm going to kind of find the halfway point on each line segment of the middle here, of that middle square, and draw a diagonal to there from the ends and kind of see how that goes. If I were to just draw it to the corners, you'll see the diagonals don't quite match. So I want to draw it to the middle of each line segment. And the letter X is a little odd because you can change the, uh, the thickness or the diagonals if you'd like. So what you'll notice here is that I'm adding an outline to each part of it. And I'm starting with the uh, very straight, very clearly defined lines first, and then adding my outline to the rest of it. And what you'll notice when I do the outline is the lines are not exactly parallel and I need to extend those connection points on these sides 
out just a little bit into space. So it's not, there's not really an exact measurement, which makes me a little uncomfortable sometimes when I'm trying to draw stuff. But as long as I put it in the correct spot on the isometric grid, I know that I'll be fine and it will look okay in that space. So I'm going to go about halfway up the, the uh, block for those connection points and just a little bit out in the middle. So now let's mark off those, those easy straight lines, the ones that would be horizontal are now slanted on a diagonal on the isometric grid. So I'm going to make sure those are all parallel to each other. And then remembering my connection points at that middle and how far out they're going to be, I look at each um, kind of rhombus of the grid like a square very carefully so I can find those connection points and make them um, look similar and go to similar spots on the isometric grid paper. And if you need to see this a little bit more in depth, I do have a video about um, letters of diagonals. So remembering that, that middle square that I'm going to keep for the middle, I'm going to mark off my last connection points and get those diagonals. Is it perfect? Not quite, but that's okay. What you want to remember when you're closing it off and um, drawing your sides is you want to have those diagonals be parallel to the diagonals you drew for the you know, arms and legs of your letter X. And so that is a, a very simple, very quick, um, rough version of the letter X. And you can always change yours if you need to. Now let's check out the letter Y. So I'm going to start by marking off kind of those top points and making sure that there's a, a space in between them to match the rest of my alphabet by being three blocks wide and it's going to be five blocks tall. And this gives me a place for my uh, diagonal lines to connect back to in space. So if I were to um, take that Y and prepare to move it to the isometric grid, my first step would be to take those horizontal lines and make sure that they are diagonal on that isometric grid. Um, and then I can draw those diagonals back to those connection points. So if you uh, look carefully, it does not quite follow the lines that are marked on the isometric paper, but that is okay because if you look at each line segment carefully on the square grid, you can see I'm following the exact um, length, but the exact same kind of length in some areas and shape of those line segments if they were to just be tilted onto the grid. So my Y looks a little slanted, but it is correct. And remember when you're doing those diagonals, um, make sure that they are parallel to the other diagonals when you are making the letter Y 3D. And take a screenshot if you need to, or I have another video that goes more in depth with diagonals if you would like to see that broken down just a little bit more. And lastly, the letter Z, so it's going to be three blocks tall. I'm going to make sure the letter is five blocks tall. Sorry, so three blocks wide, five blocks tall. And I will simply draw a diagonal line that's one square thick, connecting the top and the bottom. And I'm going to outline it because I was not perfectly accurate with the highlighter, and this will help uh, both me and you to better see how this connects back to the isometric grid. So remember every vertical line segment on here is going to be vertical on the isometric grid. Anything horizontal will become diagonal, but one of the diagonals that fits the grid. But then the diagonals in here will simply connect back to those points. It'll cut through that isometric space. So if I were to mark out that end point with a vertical line, now I can draw that diagonal cutting across that space with more ease and with more confidence that I'm doing it correctly. So I'm going to draw another horizontal and then I can draw that diagonal parallel because I know exactly where it connects back to and I know that I'm drawing it correctly. It's going to be three blocks wide at the top. Next, I will send it into space using lines that go diagonally and up to the left. Then I can close it off where it makes sense. Something you want to remember is making sure that when you're making it 3D, your diagonal lines are parallel to each other when you are closing it off. And then you have the letter Z. And do remember to close off that back area so that that part is also three-dimensional. Now I know I went through these um, really quickly, but um, you can always use beginner videos or take screenshots of this one. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, please like if this was helpful, comment if you have a question, and subscribe for more or check out my other isometric drawing tutorials. Thank you so much for watching.